Welcome to Montgomery College. Welcome to the Germantown campus. Raise your hand if you're here for the first time. Wow, most of you. All right, well, a double welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. Um, I'm Margaret Latimer. I'm the vice president and provost here at the Germantown campus, but also for the college-wide STEM unit. So I have dual duty this evening in welcoming you to the campus and these two programs that you will hear about that are hosted here as part of the early college program are here. So I know I'm sort of standing between you and the people. I, I said I probably shouldn't call them the nerd squad, um, but it's a fabulous fabulous group of people who will talk to you about these programs tonight and the exciting opportunities. What I really want to do is highlight some of the reasons to consider this program. One is you wouldn't be sitting here if you're, there were not some interest, you're smart students with smart parents to be here um, and to think about this opportunity. There are financial benefits which will intrigue parents probably more than students, but these are two really exciting, fast-growing programs at the college. We have outstanding faculty. We have small classes. Um, there truly is not a better way to do your first two years of college, and the fact that you are ready to begin that as, you're, as you would be ready to start your junior year in high school um, really just makes this a wonderful opportunity. So I will um, introduce someone from Montgomery County Public Schools and turn the floor over to the people who will explain not only what these programs are, but the details of how early college works um, and give you more information on this opportunity um, so that you can make a decision. We hope to come here and be part of this. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Genevieve Floyd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. I am always excited when we have the opportunity to partner with Montgomery College. As part of my work within MCPS, I oversee many of the programs, activities, projects, initiatives that we have with Montgomery College. And I do believe that this is one of the boldest initiatives that we have undertaken in the last few years to offer students the opportunity to earn a college degree while simultaneously working on their high school diploma. We have a, a variety of programs in the school system, but we do believe that with the diverse student population that we have, it's important to provide these options to students so that we can meet them at their needs. And we do have students who are 15, 16, 17, who are capable of going to college and in fact who have already gone to college while still in high school. We started this program last year, and last year we started with an enrollment of 49 students. This year we have tripled the enrollment, and this year we started the program with 151 students. So it is our hope, as, we, as I look out into the audience, that many of you will start our third year in one of these programs and also have the opportunity that many students are taking advantage of now. It's so interesting, I've shared that they have the opportunity to earn their college degree and their high school diploma. And those who have gone before you, it's interesting and exciting too, that all of them, in fact, earn their college degree before they earn their high school diploma. And that's also going to be the case with this graduating class because Montgomery College graduation is in May and their high school graduation is in June. So it's just wonderful opportunity for our students. You're going to hear from one of the representatives this evening. You're going to hear a lot of information about this opportunity, not only from the dean, but definitely from Ms. Crawley, who's going to talk about the cost, the process, the procedures. Also, Mr. Sullivan, who's in my office, who's going to share more about the application process. And I do encourage you to listen very carefully. And anything that you have a question about, please jot it down, because we are going to stay here until the very end to answer all of your questions. It's important that you hear this information so that you can make an informed decision going forward. So we are delighted, we are excited to offer this opportunity to you. But I'm also going to share with you some news that we just received today. So definitely we have these two programs that are going to be offered here at the Germantown campus, and I know that you are here to hear about cybersecurity and computer science. But we are also going to expand the degree offerings here at the Germantown campus. So not only will, be, will Montgomery College be offering these two degrees, but we will also be offering elementary education, business degree, and biological science. So if, you, can, you can applaud. Excellent. 
So even if you're not interested in those degrees, if you know you have other relatives, friends who have children who may want to be a teacher, who may want to be go into medicine, may want to be may want to be a veterinarian, may want to go into business, an entrepreneur, an accountant, these are additional program options that we're going to make available with the um, support or Montgomery College is going to make available to our students. So we are expanding options and opportunities every single year and we're excited to share that news with you. We are also expanding in the Rockville campus where Montgomery College will offer an engineering degree. So we're growing and we're expanding and I do encourage you to listen very carefully and if there's anything that you still have questions about, please don't leave without asking that question. A lot of information is coming to you and we're excited that you are here to receive it all. So at this time, I'm gonna ask Ms. Crawley, Ms. Amy, Amy Crawley to come forward and she's gonna to talk to you in more detail and proceed with the agenda as planned. So Ms. Crawley, please receive her as she comes. Good evening, it's great to see such a big turnout. Um, I am looking to see if we have any more seats available down here. Um, we have a, a couple of single seats and two seats. If anybody wants to come down, I think she's got a couple of seats there. Anybody else? So the MC, MCPS Montgomery College collaboration is providing the opportunity for students from multiple high schools, from all 25 high schools, to complete their high school graduation requirements on the Montgomery College campus and begin their college career. So students are going to be completing their Maryland State High School Diploma requirements while simultaneous working on their degree. So students, will be taking all of their classes on the college campus. And I'm gonna repeat that again because I get this question as follow-up often. Students do not go back to their high school. They don't go to the high school for half of the day. They are Montgomery College students for two years um, in this program. So they take all their classes on the college campus and those college classes fulfill high school requirements as well as college degree requirements. We put students in what we call cohorts so that they're taking their class with other students in the same program. So they get acquainted, they form study groups. Um, they're in, you know, with younger students. We get to select the faculty who teach those classes so we're able to select the best faculty. Um, they get great schedules. Anybody, everybody in the room who's been to college knows that there's nothing worse than an 8 a.m. class, especially on a Monday morning. And so we're really fortunate that most of our classes start at nine o'clock in the morning, and we try to get students out by early afternoon, which then affords them the opportunity to participate in activities at their home high school, which a number of students do. So students through this program will complete one of our degrees, the AA, the AS, the AAT, the AS degree, and then we'll be able to transfer to a four-year institution. Now, in the state of Maryland, the transfer is fairly seamless. Our credits are recognized by all the University of Maryland system institutions. So the county is really gung-ho about this program because what we're doing is We've selected areas where there are jobs in Montgomery County and in this area so that we are educating basically our future workforce to come back Montgomery County and be employed in the county in areas where we have jobs. So as far as what we're looking at for students to apply, we are hoping that you will have completed the majority of your service learning hours we want you in ninth and 10th grade to have completed PE. That would be um, our ideal situation. Um, students have to earn grades of C or higher in this program. So to stay in this program, you have to get grades of C, and there are a number of reasons for that. 
One would be because often a grade of C is a prerequisite or a requirement to take the following class um, in the track. Another is transferring credits. If they're in your major, schools want to see Cs or higher. Some institutions will not tr transfer in any grade below a C. And the third reason is for financial aid purposes. When you finish this program, we're going to assist you in applying for financial aid for your four-year institution, but you must make academic progress when you're in college. So very important for numerous reasons to receive grades of C or, or higher. When students are in their second year in the program, they'll be working with their early college coordinator, and that's the person who is on campus working with our students to go through the admissions application process. Now, early college students are still tied to their home high school. They will receive communications from their high school counselor, but they'll be working as well with the early college coordinator. And at this point, I just want to let you know, if you have a college already in mind that you've known, this is where I want to go to school, this is your dream school, it is not too early to reach out to those schools, contact their admissions office, and ask them the following questions. If I apply to your institution and I'm coming in with 60 college credits, but I haven't graduated from high school, you can tell them about this program, do I apply as a freshman or a transfer? That's your first question. And the second question would be, will you review, will you accept transfer credits? The majority of institutions will, but there are certain select institutions such as Harvard, West Point, and some other schools that require you do all of your credits there at the institution. And then there are some other schools who will not accept credits that you use for both high school and college requirements. They'll only consider the college credits. So I'm just letting you know way in advance, do your due diligence. If you already know there are schools you want to apply to, you can start checking that out. But I can tell you in the University of Maryland system, you apply as a freshman and they will accept our transfer credits as long as we have our agreements in those areas. So you won't have any problems. And the majority of institutions will accept them. But again, I don't want you to believe or think that every institution will accept all of the credits done in this program. Our admissions requirements are that students must have taken their math and their English state assessments. We're looking for students who have a 2.75 high school grade point average, so the letters were mailed out to 10th grade students who had that grade point average. You will be completing the MCPS early college application as the common application, which Mr. Sullivan will talk about. And then later on in the process, you'll complete the MCPS early college application and the Montgomery College admissions application. Something very important to note is all of our early college students are required to attend a summer transition program. It is mandatory. And it is approximately four weeks long, and the dates are there for you already. So. I already have my vacation planned around this, so you can put this on your calendar. If you're accepted to this program, you have to be available July 6th through July 31st. The program is Monday through Friday, and generally runs 9 to 12 o'clock each day. Finally, students must meet the college assessment levels, and we'll be talking a little bit more about the assessment test for each of the individual programs. And now I would like to introduce Mr. David Hall, who is a department chair of science, engineering, and technology at the Germantown Tacoma Park campus, and he's going to talk to you about the cybersecurity program. Mr. Hall. Now I gotta figure this thing out. Huh, good. Uh, good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Is this close enough? Um, as she just said, I'm Dave Hall. I'm Chair of Science, Engineering, Technology. I've worked with the cybersecurity program here since its founding. Uh, we wrote a grant with uh, several other colleges and the U.S. government, 
and got this rolling about 2003. Our courses started rolling out around 2008, and we've been in the cybersecurity business ever since. Uh, this is, from what I've seen, one of the strongest cybersecurity programs for community colleges in the U.S., and we've seen a lot of them. Uh, so I feel very fortunate to work here, and I'm sure you'll feel the same way when you, when you go to classes here. We have uh, great faculty. Um, I've been asked to cover a couple of things that I'm sure the parents would like to know about, such as does this degree transfer anywhere? Uh, Amy talked a little bit about that. Uh, and here's a list of several of the colleges we do transfer to. When we have a transfer agreement set up, that means probably all of your 60 credits from Montgomery College will be accepted by the receiving school. So you don't have to worry about having to retake things in order to continue there if you go to one of these schools that we're attached to. Uh, our primary receiver is University of Maryland University College, but I heard they've upgraded their name recently to UMU, was GC, Global College, is that it? Um, so now you'll be, if you transfer there, you'll be going to a global college. Um, actually, they have a long history of that already, so I, I guess they just finally got around to changing the name. Uh, so anyhow, our program is compatible, especially with these colleges, and so that should be no problem in your transition after you finish here. Uh, and that was very interesting. I thought about you're going to get your your college degree before you get your high school degree. And if you're in cybersecurity, you'll get it in that. So I guess it's, as the song said, welcome to the new age. Some things you'll have to take into consideration if you're going to go into cybersecurity. Uh, one is, one of the largest employers in this area of the country is the US government. Uh, not thinking too deeply about current things. The US government is very strict on who it hires, and you'll probably need a uh, security clearance. Uh, some of that will be mentioned in your classes. Something for you to think about when you're on social media, uh, because when you get a security clearance, they check everything about your past, and they will go around and ask people about you. So just Think about that. Now, uh, if you don't go into U.S. government work, and by the way, U.S. government work includes civilian companies that contract a lot of their work to the U.S. government, such as Lockheed Martin and Boeing and places like that. So if you're working on a security job, say at Lockheed Martin, that means you'd probably have to have a security clearance. However, if you're working for a company that doesn't have U.S. government contracts, uh, you probably will not need a security clearance, but even now, a lot of companies are requiring a background check. Uh, so start thinking about that as you move through the next few years. Some opportunities for cybersecurity majors, and pardon me for looking at the slides. I can't see my notes here because they're too tiny. Uh, we have tutors available to help you through some of the courses you may find technical cha technically challenging. Uh, we have a great cybersecurity club that's been in business for a while. They have lots of events and things to help you uh, with the things you're studying during your regular class, house, uh, class hours. Uh, we have a Twitter account link that you can use here. Uh, and this next column over here on the right uh, are very all kind of similar to each other. They're job opportunities and in internship opportunities and volunteer opportunities. Those all will enhance your career and your experience in cybersecurity. There's nothing like working a on a job to get to know what the business is really like and to make contacts as you are learning. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, there are cybersecurity conferences. Uh, some of these are big, fancy conferences for people with lots of experience, and that leaves people who are in the field with uh, a narrow 
venue in which to present papers and talk about concerns in cybersecurity. However, there are other conferences that have sprung up all over the country now. Uh, one of the names of these are called B-Sides or B-Sides. That's for, these are smaller conferences, often in a local city such as Washington, D.C. or Baltimore. And our faculty in the past has sometimes been able to take five or six students to one of these conferences that are not too far away. So those are great opportunities to talk with people who are working in the field, other students, and all sorts of uh, uh, connections like that. We produce also cybersecurity web webcasts and more. Uh, we have a wonderful cybersecurity lab in this building, uh, and I have a, a slide coming up next to show you some of the things that are going on this month in cybersecurity here at Montgomery College. This is in addition to classes. So as you hopefully can see on this slide here, October 4th was an NSA, National Security Agency, for, or no such agency, it depends on how you want to read that. Uh, NSA co-op program briefing and recruiting. So you'll have an opportunity to meet recruiters from NSA, except that was on October 4th, sorry about that. Uh, just today, if you were already a student here, but now you've missed it, uh, Cybersecurity at Data Prize, uh, uh, Data Prize Internship Recruiting took place this afternoon upstairs in the Cyber Lab. October 16th, how attackers secretly exfiltrate stolen data. Uh, and that's presented by uh, our cybersecurity advisor, David Vargas, who's uh, one of our main cybersecurity folks here. Uh, next is a cybersecurity competition, which will be on October 25th. We run several of these every year, and they are attended by stud our students and people from other colleges and universities around the state. Uh, let's see, and then uh, October 30th, how attackers communicate with compromised systems, again by Professor Vargas. Uh, you'll be seeing him in some of your classes. And in the near future, we're looking for an FDA cyber center trip where we get some students and take them out to a place to see what's being done in the government with cybersecurity right now. So there are lots of opportunities here. Uh, so you've come to the right place. Thank you. And next, and next we'll be seeing Professor Alla Webb to talk to you about computer science and technology. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? How are you doing so far? Good? How many of us are interested here, who's here, who's interested in computer science? Raise your hand. Very good. How about cybersecurity? Okay, I see some hands did not get raised. What does it mean? <laughs> what are we interested in? So if you're here, we will talk a little bit more. Thank you for cybersecurity. But to be able to secure something, you have to build something, right? So who is going to build all these systems? We'll talk about it in a minute. So computer science has a lot of different uh, things, right? So the first thing that we want to introduce you to, where you can go. What you have here is a list of schools that we have agreements with, and they're local, but there are other schools. They take our courses, so we are not limited to what you see here. But if you want to go to University of Maryland College Park, you want to go to UMBC, uh, you want to go to other schools listed here or more, we have courses for you to take. So what you need to do is to be dedicated, to put some time in, because most of these programs do have strict requirements. So when you come here, you take math, you take computer science, and you need to make sure that you put all your effort because those courses are excuse me, required to be completed on the first attempt to at least University of Maryland and to get A or B or good grades. So we have more things for you to look at. What do we have? 
career opportunities. How many of you know what computer science degree gives you? As a computer scientist, what can you do? Go ahead. The computer programmer, how many of you know that software engineer is computer science degree graduate? What other things do you see here? A software developer, computer support specialist, and many more, right? So how many of you are interested in technology now? Raise your hand. Hopefully most, right? <laughs> okay, so if you want to learn more about what you have, we have at the bottom the address which is montgomerycollege.edu computer science, but we are not done yet. What do we have here for you? We have free tutoring, we have the club. There are multiple clubs available. One of them is Raptor Who Code. You can learn how to code, you can learn how to build your resume, and you can learn how to get internship. Those students are very dedicated, and they want to make sure that you get what you want and share their experience. If you want to contact us, we'll see cs at montgomerycollege.edu, and again, computer science um, website. We will have an opportunity to answer your questions at the end. And again, if you want to learn how to code and how to make those apps, join our computer science program here. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Webb. Uh, there's somebody here I want to introduce um, who was instrumental in bringing the early college program opportunities to the MCPS students, and that's Montgomery College's Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Sanjay Rai. Okay. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity to talk. <laughs> Thank you very much, and welcome to Montgomery College. Welcome to Germantown campus of Montgomery College. And for all our students who are here in the audience, this is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, you come to college after your grade 10. Uh, 11th, 12th, you don't go to high school. You come to a campus. You graduate in computer science, cybersecurity, biology, mathematics, engineering, elementary ed, and, and uh, uh, health sciences, right? And um, we are always working with industries, businesses, and aligning our program uh, to serve the needs of the businesses. When we do that, our students get an opportunity and get a job right after they graduate. Right now, in uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia area, their last one year, in the last one year, there were about half a million IT-related job postings. Half a million, lots of jobs. An average salary for IT-related jobs in this area, last year it was about $108,000. Pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you have heard of a company called Amazon, right? When I was growing up, Amazon meant something else. <laughs> Old, right? Do kids know what Amazon meant for people like me? River, forest, things like that. <laughs> but now it means something else. So these half a million jobs are without their impact. They are going to, to bring more jobs. <coughs> they do a lot of uh, computer science, regular uh, computer science, but they do a lot of uh, cloud computing, and there's an AWS curriculum pro for cloud computing, and Montgomery College will be one of the first institutions in the country, one of the first, not the first, to offer those, those degrees right here. So you get those degrees here, first two years, then you transfer to, to many places. Our students go to Georgia Tech, MIT, and others too, and you saw a list here and then uh, you cut, you know, undergraduate uh, degree programs are four years, now you will do them in two years, right? Look at the implication and cost, and then uh, you will not have $100,000 of loan, 
right? Hundreds and thousands of dollars of loan. And when you graduate, you will have a very good paying job. How can you argue against that, right? Yeah, you can't. Um, we have one of the best faculty, Montgomery College's strength is one of the best faculty we have. Our faculty have credentials from, from Ivy League schools. They have a small classes, 18 students, not 250 students and teaching assistant. I used to be a teaching assistant, so I'm not going to uh, put them down. My students learned something from me. Um, but, uh, you know, smaller classes, highly qualified faculty, then we have support centers, math tutoring center, writing center. And they are also, our faculty are there as tutors, and we have staff tutors also who are highly, highly qualified. Our facilities are one of the best in the country. You go and look at our bioscience education center uh, next uh, door. We are opening another science facility on this campus in the next couple of months. <coughs> so. <coughs> Great professors, great facility, cutting-edge curriculum, curriculum that that um, uh, gets you a very good job. So uh, welcome. Please apply. Please look at this very carefully. Uh, we are so thankful to our school system. Uh, we have worked together in creating these opportunities for for, for our uh, uh, citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rai. Okay, and now you are in for a treat. We have with us tonight our, one of our second year students in the AS Mathematics program, and you're gonna be hearing for Mr. Safala Rafia about his experience as an early college student. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me? Alrighty, uh, so my name is Safiel Larafai, and I'm a second year student here at Montgomery College, uh, and I'm a math major, That's, I have to add that, repping the math one. Uh, <laughs> so I have a question uh, that every student in the room should ask themselves. And the question is, how am I different? This is an important question to ask yourself because it ensures that you, lead, you, that you lead a unique life with unique perspectives, with unique experiences that matter to yourself. Now the question that colleges will ask you is not how am I different, but how are you different? And you have to answer that question to make it to college. There will be 40,000 applicants, or likewise to that number, to Ivy League schools and very competitive universities and colleges. And everyone, everyone and their mom will have a 1600 and a five on all 13 APs that they took. They would have gotten a 4.0 GPA and aced every class, at least 10,000 of those applicants. And now the question no longer is, do you have the merit? Are you smart enough? Are you bright enough? But the question is, how are you different? Now the answer for me and 34 of my fellow classmates in the early college cohort is I'm part of the early college program. And let me tell you why that is one of the best, if not the best answers that you can give on a college application. First and foremost, the early college program provides an amount of course rigor that is unparalleled when compared to high school. Now you might ask, hey Sophila, how, how can you compare to high school? Well, the thing is, if you take 13 APs, the equivalent of about 13 college classes, and then you multiply by three credit hours, which is the average amount of, of college credits per college class, you get about 39 college credits. And now let's round that up. Let's say you get 45 college credits while you were in high school. That is, you worked so hard. You took 13 APs or 14 APs, and you managed to pull off 45 credits in high school. You're a whiz. Like, if you got a five on all the APs and got all the credits, you're a genius, AKA my older brother. But that's besides the point. Uh, so he busted himself and got right about 45 credits. He transferred him to UMD and he, basically he finished his freshman and half of his sophomore year. 
And then there's me. So right now, I'm a second year student here at Montgomery College. Can anyone guess how many hours I have accumulated so far? I haven't even finished my senior year. Just in junior year, how many credits do I have? Can anyone get, throw out a number, someone. <laughs> what? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Wait a second. Let me remind you, let me remind the, the maximum number of credits that you can transfer to UMD is 60, all right? <laughs> right off the bat. No, 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 that's, that's, you're skipping two grades. You're asking for too much if you're transferring 100 credits, all right? All right, I'll tell you. So right now, I have 49 credits. And I'm a junior, I, I just finished junior year. And I'm going to graduate with 84. <laughs> like, and that's not even like the biggest deal. That's like, that's one of my minor persuading components I have here. Um, let me tell you, let me tell you my course schedule, all right? So you know how the average like senior in high school has senioritis? Does anyone know who senioritis is? Can someone give me a definition of senioritis over here? Who's got it? Yell it out loud, loud and proud. Well, you're super lazy. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, so my schedule is the most anti senioritis thing that is physically possible. My schedule, my easiest class is AP Physics C. General Physics, it's General Physics 161. Uh, my second easiest class is Multivariable Calculus. My third easiest class is Discrete Mathematics. And my hardest class is organic chemistry. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you might call me insane, and I might answer, yeah, insane is my middle name. So yeah, that's, um, but that's the point on course rigor. Which high school offers organic chemistry? I know Poolsville offers organic chemistry for one semester, and that does not give you college credit. But here, that credit will transfer as five credit hours to UMD, and no high school can do that for you. And which college, which high school offers discrete mathematics? None. There's not a single high school in MCPS that would do that. But you can do that here at MC. Now, which college or which high school can offer underwater basket weaving? <laughs> no, yeah, MC doesn't offer that either. <laughs> <laughs> but that's besides the point. But MC has many unique courses that you cannot take in high school. And uh, I find that very valuable because it's not how many APs that matters in your college applications. What matters is how hard and unique was your course rigor and how unique did that make you. Now, we talked about course rigor. Now, another major component about coming to the early college program is weighted GPAs. I mentioned that as of right now, I have the roundabouts of 49 credits. Now, what this means is when you account for this in my weighted GPA and everyone else in the early college cohort, we have the highest weighted GPAs in the entire state because no one else in our grade level has as many credits as we do. I have a friend whose weighted GPA is a 4.8. That's ridiculous and it's possible, but it's not possible when you're in high school. So with our weighted GPA standing out like that figure, Ivy Leagues will catch on to this number and they'll ask, how did he do it? Out of 40,000 40, applicants, your weighted GPA will stand out. Hopefully your SAT score will stand out too. And your course rigor will definitely stand out. And this is how you make it to an Ivy League school. You gotta be different. Because your grades, everyone's got an A. Now let's say hypothetically, you apply for some Ivy Leagues and you also apply for UMD. Here's another major point that I'd like to express is the amount of time you're saving. You're skipping two grades. You're finishing your freshman and sophomore year of college simultaneously with your junior and senior year. To express just how crazy that sounds, I will be graduating when I'm 18, not high school, college. That's. That's saving time, and that's not only saving time, that's saving money, right? You're, you're, putting, you're easing the load off your parents, and you're also saving your own money in the long run. And beyond just your course rigor, course rigor is fine, your weighted GPA is fine, you're saving time, that's okay, but 
Another thing that keeps, that's really distinct in the college experience is the internships that you can get. Uh, we just had uh, a fellow professor talking about the, the opportunities here at Montgomery College, about like the FDA and cybersecurity and all kinds of seminars that we have here. Um, I just came back from work. Uh, I work down the street. I work at the National, Institute, the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. I work at NIST. So, and I got that job through Montgomery College. So the average high schooler, where do they work? They, they usually lifeguard or work at the vet, or they, they do something generic. But here you have the opportunity to broaden your horizons. You have the opportunity to apply your learning. I'm a math major. They value the fact that I can do multivariable calculus. My job is vector multiplication on high-performance computers. I'm building, along with my mentor, the fastest computers on the planet to, w to work with deep learning problems and artificial intelligence. We're working on some cutting-edge stuff. And you guys have the opportunity to take a slice of that cake if you join the early college program. Now, to get those same opportunities in high school, let me tell you a little secret. You need an inside man. <laughs> That's the way you do it. <laughs> Because I know for a fact, I came from Poolsville High School, uh, as a matter of fact, and over there, if you had like a dad or a sibling working at NIST or at some government corporation or some government organization, they can help you get in with a mentor or a sponsor. But MC has those connections for you. They can get you in those wedges and in those cracks where usually it's really difficult to get into. And for this reason, these experiences will make you distinct. Your way to GPA, your extracurricular activities, your course rigor, and your experiences. These four things will make you the most distinct applicant that will apply to any school. Now, last but not least, I want to I wanna leave on, uh, on a main touch point uh, that I think is really important. And it's, it's the fact and the matter of why you're here. And there's a saying, it goes, behind every successful child is a nagging mother. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. Class for the moms out there. And what can I say except for that's 100% true considering all of y'all are here. That's the reason all of y'all are here. It's because your mom found this opportunity for you and you're here now. But you should go home and thank your mom because she found you the best deal on eBay for Yeezys that you've ever seen. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is great. And honestly, I don't know why I should be standing up here and persuading you. It's like, it's like I'm in front of a hungry lion already and I'm waving like a big juicy like steak. You're already hungry. Like, why would I have to do that for you? But I'm here anyways. I'm holding the steak and it's up to you if you want to eat it. So, it's your choice at this point. After all that I've told you, I could go on for another whole day telling you about what's great about the early college program, uh, but I don't have that much time. Do I? Do I have that much time? I, I don't have that much time. Well, I could do it. Um, but it's really your decision if you want to take up my advice and join the early college program. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you so much. I told you he'd be good. <laughs> so now we're going to go on a little bit about the cost of the program. So if, if somebody was to graduate from MCPS last year, come to Montgomery College as a high school graduate, and pay for a computer science or a cybersecurity degree, the tuition and the fees and the textbooks for two years would run about $12,700, and that's based on this year's tuition and fees prices. Looking at the same program, the amount of money that is contributed by MC and MCPS to this program is $9,920. So the cost of the program, therefore, based on this year's tuition to the family is $2,724. So that comes out to about $681 a semester. So what the families are paying for this degree is only the Board of Trustees fees. The tuition and the textbooks are covered. In addition, if a student is free and reduced meals eligible, 
there is no charge. So if a student is free and reduced meals eligible for MCPS, they pay nothing for this program. So we really have opened this opportunity up to everybody in the county to take advantage of this program. Um, early college students are not eligible for federal financial aid. You haven't graduated from high school yet, and nor do you need financial aid to pay for this program. The college does have a high school grant program that um, students who may qualify for some financial need can apply for to help contribute to the cost of those semester fees that I mentioned, those $681. As far as transportation, um, students have access to the Montgomery College ride on bus system with their student ID. The college also has a shuttle bus system that runs between the campuses, so perhaps you live closer to the Rockville campus and you want to do the computer science program, you can take the shuttle bus from the Rockville campus up here for free. We also want to give you an idea how this is really saving you money. So taking a look at the current tuition and fees for the University of Maryland College Park. So, and this does not include what they call the limited enrollment program. Certain programs like engineering, computer science, you pay $800 additional for your junior and senior years for each semester. So taking a look at the tuition and fees. So if you graduated from MCPS, went straight to College Park, you'd be paying about $47,000 in change for four years of tuition and fees. That's not housing, just tuition and fees in textbooks. If you graduated from high school from MCPS and went to Montgomery College for the first two years, you'd be paying that $12,700 that I mentioned that this program costs, plus the two years of College Park, so $36,148. Students who come and do this program basically are paying a total of $26,282 for that same University of Maryland College Park degree. So that's the fees, the 2724 you pay, and the two years of College Park. So that's a savings of 20, over $20,000, close to $21,000 for students to get a four-year degree from College Park if they do this program. So that's a huge savings of money for parents to be thinking about. Kind of give an idea of how you're saving time. So the top pathway is a traditional pathway. You're in high school for four years, going on to college, some combination for four years. Well, doing the early college program, you're in high school, the first two years are represented in yellow. The, the green are the crossover where you're doing high school, junior and senior year, and your first two years of college, then moving on to the blue blocks for year three and four, and then you've got those postgraduate degree years. So in the same amount of time that it takes you to earn a bachelor's degree through the traditional path, you can have a master's degree, for example, if you did the early college program. I want to talk a little bit about some of the requirements. All of our degrees have what we call general education requirements. They're a set of core classes that are part of our degrees. They help students develop foundational skills, um, prepare them for success in not only in education, but also in their careers. The classes are in writing, humanities, social sciences, and, and behavioral sciences as well. These classes will all transfer in the University of Maryland system, and they create a basic educational foundation for all students, no matter where they transfer to. As far as the academic support, Dr. Rye referred to some of the things that we provide in this program, but I had mentioned the mandatory summer transition program, which runs again July the 6th through July 31st. And the purpose of this is to bring the students onto the campus and kind of bridge that gap between their high school behavior and experience and knowledge and prepare them for college expectations. So we do a math prep program. We're making students aware of campus resources. They learn um, study skills, time management skills, team building. They become familiar with the campus and opportunities open to them. 
We go over their degree program so they understand their degree requirements and how they're gonna complete both the associate's degree and the high school diploma by taking these college classes. And they also increase their knowledge of the policies and procedures at the college. Um, in addition, students, right now, if you're considering doing this program, we urge you to think about the assessment testing you're going to have to take, and you can start using the Khan Academy that you have free access to to help you increase your English and your mathematics skills. The college um, at the Ackerman Center is on the Rockville campus, but here at the Germantown, we have a, the Maple Center as well, so we have centers where we have calculators and textbooks and review sessions. Um, the business department, if you do the business program that's gonna be brought here, there'll be tutoring. All of our programs have embedded coaches, and when an embedded coach is, it is an individual who's familiar with the, the content area who has access to your instructor, has the syllabus, occasionally sits in on class and runs review sessions. So when you have a quiz coming up, an exam coming up, there are specified times where you can meet with that person. We have them in all of our math classes, we have them in our English classes, and we have them all in our science classes. So that is a benefit that is available only to students in the early college program. Now, other students at Montgomery College do have access to embedded coaches, but all of our students have access to embedded co coaches in all the classes that I mentioned. Um, in addition, each one of our campuses, we have an early college coordinator, and I'm going to introduce Ms. Ida Britton. Ms. Britton will stand up. The early college coordinator basically is there in person. They're there to make sure that the students connected with services. They do progress reports with the faculty members. They register the students for their classes. They ensure that the students take in the proper college classes to fulfill their diploma requirements as well as their degree requirements. They will be communicating with your home high school um, guidance counselor to ensure you're meeting your requirements. Uh, they make sure your service learning credits are met. They connect you to opportunities on campus. We have all kinds of things going on on all the campuses. We have job fairs, we have speakers. The students all just went to the transfer fairs um, that the college had. So they're making students aware from the time they come in in the summer to the time they leave. In the second year, again, they're the person who's working with the students to ensure that they're completing their college applications. The campuses each have writing centers, so there are, there's tutoring. You can sign up for appointments to work with somebody on your paper. They have workshops. Again, we have computer labs on all the campuses. Um, I want to talk briefly about our Disability Support Services Office. So our DSS office provides accommodation supports for students who with qualified documented disabilities. So if a student, if you're currently a student in MCPS and you have an IEP or a 504, that plan does not convey to the college. However, students can apply for college services. So we strongly urge, we beg you, if you're accepted to this program, apply for services through the DSS office. The phone number that's listed there is the one for the Rockville campus but students should be applying for services at least a month before the start of the semester. You may say, I'm going to college now, I don't want to do that. It doesn't hurt to go ahead, apply for the services, and if you decide you don't want to use them at first, that's your decision, but we strongly recommend you to go ahead and apply for those services. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Michael Sullivan from MCBS, who's gonna go over the application process for you. So the first thing I'm gonna say is there are a lot of cameras growing, going up, and I think for our next uh, presentation, the last slide we're gonna show might be a really good one to start with, because I think there are gonna be a lot of blurry pictures out there. All of this information is gonna be up on the web, and some of it is already there. 
So as you're trying to take pictures of the slides, it might be easier to see right on the web. So I'll give you in a few minutes those uh, web addresses. So as I see the cameras going up, you might get a better picture right from the computer. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about what your ne next steps are, because you've heard a lot of information tonight. I hope it's inspired you and made you think about taking on this challenge and being a part of this program. And if you do decide to do that, your next step is to do the application. That application is going to be up in mid-October. That's in a week, week and a half, that it'll be up on the MCPS student and parent portal. The deadline for that application is just a few weeks away just three weeks away, it's November 1st. After November 1st, right around November 13th, we're gonna be letting students know whether they meet the initial qualifications. Gotta be in 10th grade. I'm sorry, 9th graders and 8th graders and 11th graders, gotta be in 10th grade. So we will be going through those applications looking for those initial requirements. Throughout the rest of the year, we'll be holding shorter uh, steps in the process all the way through to the summer program, which Ms. Crowley reminded everyone uh, at the end in July to be at that summer program, July 6th through 31st. It's really small, I was trying to look at the dates. Um, after that, between now and any time, you've got some people you can contact. We've got our email addresses up there. Again, it's gonna be right on the web. So you can go right there and get it. Um, for general information, Ms. Crowley is available. For application information, you can email me and I can tell you how to go through that part of the application. The big one that everybody wants to know is where is more detailed information? Well, it's all here on the web. Okay. Easiest way is search dual enrollment on the MCPS website and click on the very first result. 